Hi everyone, welcome to my video tutorial for multimodal data analysis. Today, I'm going to show you how to perform joint RNA-seq and ATAC-seq data analysis using weighted nearest neighbor analysis. When you see my video talking about a joint analysis, which means both data set, for example here, the RNA-seq and the ATAC-seq data were generated using the same set of samples. When I talk about data integration, that means the data set were generated from different samples or by different sequencing technology. The data set that I'm using today for the demonstration was generated by the 10 times genomics using the nuclei isolated from PBMC and perform the single cell multi ohm ATAC seq plus gene expression that means RNA seq using the same set of samples. So you can download the data down here. So you need to download the filter rate feature barcode matrix data and the ATAC seq fragment files together with the index for the fragment files. So I downloaded the data already. Let's go back to R. So first we need to load the packages through that SIGLAC ensemble database for human genes and also the library tidyverse. So now we can import the count matrix data into R and the count matrix data contains both the RNA-seq and the ATAC data data. You can see R loaded the data and the data contains two list. If we click the data, you can see one list is for the gene expression matrix data and the other one is for the ataxic PIX matrix data. So first let's separate the gene expression data and the um, ataxic data. So we can get the matrix data for RNA counts and the matrix data for ATAC counts. Now we can use the RNA counts to create a threat object as PBMC. So you can see we have a threat object here named as PBMC. If we click the PBMC to see the threat project, you can see in the metadata, we have the n-count RNA and the n-features RNA for the RNA assay. So you know when we perform the quality control analysis, we need the percentage of mitochondria DNA, so we can calculate the percentage of mitochondria DNA and store it into the metadata for the PBMC. So next we get the matrix data from the ATAC account for standard chromosome. Then we can annotate the peaks using the ensemble database for home genome. Okay, because we are using the uh, human genome 38, then we change the annotation style to UCSC. Now we import the fragment files. Then we can use the fragment files together with the 
count metrics to create a chromatin assay. So now we can add the chromatin assay as an ATAC assay into the PBMC object. So before we do this, let's have a look at the PBMC object. You can see at the moment we only have one assay as RNA. Now we can add the ATAC assay in. Then let's do this. We can have a look at the PBMC object again. You can see now we have two assays. One is RNA, the other one is ATAC assay. So now we created a threat object contains both RNA assay and ATAC assay. We don't need the rest of files for the following analysis. We just keep the PBMC threat object. Let's remove those files. You can see in the environment window, we only have the PBMC threat object. So next, we can perform the, the quality control analysis. First, we can use the variable input node to see the end count for ATAC assay, N count for RNA assay, and the percentage of mitochondria DNA. So let's run the variant input node. We can zoom in to have a look at the variant input node. As I introduced in my previous videos, we can keep the cells for the ATAC account in this region and the the cells for RNA account in this region, and we will keep the cells have mitochondria DNA percentage below 20%. So let's use those parameters to fill out the low quality cells for the quality control. So after the quality control, we can have a look at the data. You can see we have uh, for the assays, for the RNA assay, we have more than 36,000 genes and uh, uh, 10,412 cells. For the ATAC assay, we have the same number of cells. And there are more than 100,000 peaks in the ATAC assay. So now we can perform independent uh, data normalization data scaling and dimensional reduction analysis. So first we can perform the analysis for the RNA assay. In my previous videos for single cell RNA seq data analysis, we used the standard workflow analysis. So today we are going to use the ST transform to perform the analysis for RNA data normalization data scaling, then we can run PCA and UMAP. You can see here, we named the, the reduction name as the UMAP RNA, and the reduction key as the RNA UMAP. So let's run the analysis with the pipe function R run SC transform, then run PCA, then UMAP. You can see here, we didn't uh, run find the neighbors and uh, find the clusters. The variable features will be identified in the SC transform step. So we did the RNA data analysis. Let's use the DIM plot to have a look at the uh, RNA data set. We can zoom in. You can see at the moment, all the cells are labeled just as the threat project because 
we didn't run find the neighbors and uh, find the cell clusters in this step of analysis. So next we can do the analysis for the ATAC assay. Now we need to set the default assay as ATAC. Now run the standard workflow analysis. Let I introduce the in my ATAC seek data analysis. So first is uh, normalize the data, then find the top features. They are peaks for the ATAC-seq data. So next we run uh, SVD. It is the same function as, as run PCA for the RNA-seq data. So now we can run UMAP for the ATAC seek data. It is done, then we can have a look at the cell canasters again, use the DIMP node. Similarly, we only see the cells were enabled as a threat project because we didn't run find the neighbors and find the canasters. This is because we want to run the find the neighbors and find the canasters in the, the following analysis. So we performed the, the uh, individual analysis for the RNA seq data and also the ATAC seq data. Now we use the weighted nearest neighbor analysis to calculate a WNN graph representing a weighted combination of both RNA and ATAC theta modalities. Then we can use this graph for UMAP realization and the cell clustering. So let's find the multimodal neighbors using the WNN analysis. Now we can run the UMAP and the name the graph as the weighted NN. Reduction name will be WNN UMAP. After UMAP, we can find the cell clusters from the graph. So now we are ready to uh, visualize the cell clusters using the dim plot function, and uh, we tell the dim plot function the reduction method will be the WNN UMAP. So we are going to use the graph generated by this analysis, so we can run the DIMP node function and we can zoom in to see the cell clusters. You can see we have 22 cell clusters in the data set containing both RNA and ATAC assay. Because this data set was frequently used for demonstration, so we know the cluster name very well, and the cluster 6 has sub-clusters for T-cells, and also we can use the find sub-clusters function to identify the sub-clusters for cluster 6. We can use the DIMP node to have a look at the cell clusters again. Let's zoom in. You can see now we divide the cluster 6 into four sub-clusters. As I mentioned above, we know the data set very well and the, and the previous analysis. Using cell type specific markers, we already identified the name for 
each cell canisters. So I'm not going to show next step. We just use the knowledge we have before to enable the cell canisters. Let's run the labeling. And we can use the dim not function again to see the cell canisters. Let's zoom in. You can see now we label the all the cell canisters with the canister name on the right hand side. So here is the graph for the WNN analysis. We can plot uh, the graph for RNA analysis, ATAC analysis, and uh, WNN analysis together, and uh, we analyze them in the same figure. So let's zoom in again. You can see now the cell canisters in the ATAC analysis and also cell canisters in the RNA analysis are labeled by the same name. When we label the, the cell canisters in WNN analysis, that is because the cells have the same barcode number. For example, the purple color cell canister, CD14 positive monocyte, they have the same cell buckles. Then they can be named the, the same cell canister, CD14 monocyte. So now, use the WNN analysis, we label the, the cell canister for both RNA analysis and the ATAC analysis. Then we can uh, perform more f analysis. I'm going to use two examples for the analysis. Of course, you can do more. So first, we can set the default as the RNA. Then we can use the feature plot to check the gene expression in different cell canisters. For example, here we are going to use the CD8A. It is a mark gene for T cells. If we run the feature plot, we can zoom in to see the cell canisters. You can see CD8A has a expression in the CD8 name, CD8 TM2 and the GDT cells. They are T cell canisters. And also we can plot the genomic regions for CD8A gene because we have the ATAC seq data. So let's use the coverage plot function to see the peaks and also the TM5 transpose enzyme binding site on the open chromatin region. So we can run the coverage plot function. Then we can zoom in. You can see the peaks for CD8 gene region is largely presented in the open um, region for the T cell canisters. And down here we can see the gene information and also the chromosome position. So I just show you two examples of the feature plot for RNA expression and the coverage plot to see the open chromatins. You can do more analysis, for example, identify the DNA motifs, identify the transcription factors binding site. But I'm going to stop here for today's demonstration. I hope my video tutorial can help your data analysis. Please subscribe to my channel if you haven't to do so. Thank you and I hope to see you in my next video.